Hello friends, hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to the 25th session of the SAT ACT series. Um, let's get started here. So our very first question is, we have been given this equation, x squared plus y squared minus 16x minus 4y plus 32 is equal to zero. And we have to find the radius of this circle. So essentially this equation represents a circle and we have to find the radius of this circle, right? So as we would have seen in uh, some of the other episodes, previous episodes, that a circle can be represented uh, in an equation, right? And we need to understand what is the standard form of a circle, right? How do we represent a circle in its standard form? And that is given by x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to r square, right? So this is the standard form of the circle where h comma k is the center of the circle and r is the radius right so all we got to do is to transform this equation into this form i mean they have not asked us the center but we have to transform this equation into this form to find our radius right how do we do that okay we take this coefficient here, the coefficient of x, and we divide it by 2, right? And we get minus 16 by 2 is 8 minus 8. So we write x minus 8 whole square. I'll tell you why we are doing that, okay? Because when we expand it back, we do get x square minus 16x, which is what we wanted. We also get plus 64 extra here, which was not required, right? So we will negate that ourselves by saying minus 64. We are trying to kind of take care of these two terms, x square and minus 16x. Now, if you see it closely and you expand it, you get x square minus 16x plus 64, and you are doing minus 64 yourself, so that gets nullified. So essentially, you get these two terms. The same thing we are going to do for the y's, right? So we'll go with the coefficient of y and divide it by two, we get minus two. So we write, plus y minus 2 whole square and we expand it back we get y square minus 4y which is what we wanted we also get a plus 4 extra which we don't need because there is no plus 4 here so we do minus 4 so basically we are trying to write the x terms into this fashion we are trying to write the y terms into this fashion uh, right and then plus 32 is already there is equal to 0 Right. Let's uh, combine all the constants. So we get x minus 8 whole square plus y minus 2 whole square minus 64 minus 4 is minus 68 and minus 68 plus 32 is minus 36. We take it to the other side of the equation to make it 36. Right. So essentially we have transformed this given equation into this form because this is the standard form of the equation and we can find the radius here. Now this 36 is not the radius, obviously 36 is r square or the radius is square. So the radius itself would be six, right? And comparing this equation with the standard form, the center of this circle would be eight comma two. So this is the center of this circle. Again, just to reiterate, this was, this was the equation given. We transformed this equation into the standard form of a circle, like x minus h whole square plus y minus k whole square is equal to r square. And there is a technique for doing that. We take the coefficient of x, we divide it by two, and then we have to negate the extra thing which we are getting here. Similarly, we take the coefficient of y, we divide it by two, and then we negate the extra thing which we are getting here. And then we consolidate all the constant terms take them to the other side of the equation and that serves as the r square and hence the square root of that would be the radius. Question number two. So we have been given a parabola in this shape and uh, there are two points given to us. This is one of the points minus 10 comma a and the other point is a comma b. And this parabola is given by this equation, 1 over 4 x plus 4 whole square minus 5. And we have to find the value of b. 
correct so pretty straightforward question right for finding the value of b basically the value of the function at x equal to a correct but what is a and a is nothing but serving as the y value when x is minus 10 right so obviously we will plug in the value of x as minus 10 here in this function and get this value of a right because a is the value of the function for x equal to minus 10 so let's plug in x equal to minus 10 and try to get the value of the function at that point which is nothing but 1 over 4 minus 10 plus 4 whole square minus 5 which is times 36 because minus 6 whole square is 36 minus 5 and which is equal to 9 minus 5 4 times 9 is 36 9 minus 4 is equal to 4 9 minus 5 is 4 so the value of the function at x equal to minus 10 is 4 or in other words the value of a is 4 correct the value of a is 4 now for finding the value of b obviously we will plug in the value of x as 4 and get the corresponding value of the function so f of 4 is equal to 1 over 4 4 plus 4 is 8, 8 square is 64 minus 5. 64 divided by 4 is 16, 16 minus 5 will be equal to 11. So that is the value of b or in other words that's the value of the function when x is a or x is 4. Again pretty straightforward question, they have given us two points we had to first find the value of a by plugging x, plugging in x equal to minus 10. Once we got the value of a, we can find the value of the function at x equal to a or in this case at x equal to 4. Uh, next question. 3 square times 6 to the power of x minus 1 minus 2 q times 6 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 1 over 6 and we have to find the value of x. Right? So the first thing which we notice in this question is that this entity 6 to the power of x minus 1, right? This entity itself that is common in these two terms, right? So we can take 6 to the power of x minus 1 comma. So 6 to the power of x minus 1 goes outside and we put a parenthesis and what is left here is 3 square. What is left here is 2q is equal to 1 over 6, right? Because if we expand it back, we will get this 3 square times 6 to the power of x minus 1 minus 2 cubed times 6 to the power of x minus 1, right? That's how we take anything common between the different terms, right? Now, let's solve this term inside, which is nothing but 9 minus 8. 3 square is 9, 2 cube is 8, is equal to 1 over 6. 9 minus 8 is 1. So essentially we are getting 6 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 1 over 6. Correct. Now 6 to the power of x minus 1, we can write it as 6 to the power of x divided by 6. Right? Is equal to 1 over 6. We cross multiply because it's a single fraction on the left, single fraction on the right, so we can cross multiply. So we get 6 to the power of x times 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 6. Right? When we are multiplying these two terms, the bases are same, so we can add the powers. So 6 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 6, or basically 6 to the power of 1. Now when the bases are same, obviously the powers have to be equal. So x plus 1 has to be equal to 1. Right? That's the only way the left side can be equal to the right side. And for x plus 1 to be equal to 1, it means x itself is 0. Right? So the value of x is 0. Again, uh, we took x 6 to the power of x minus 1 common. We solved this guy. We got this. We got this is equal to 1 over 6. Now this is nothing but 6 to the power of x divided by 6 
is equal to 1 over 6, we cross multiply it. 6 to the power of x times 6 to the power of 1 is equal to 6. We will add these powers because when we multiply the two terms with the same base, we add the powers. So we get 6 to the power of x plus 1. And on the right side, we just have 6, which is nothing but 6 to the power of 1. It means that this power has to be equal to this power, which it only is possible when x is equal to 0. So that's our answer in this case. Uh, question number 4. So we have to simplify this expression. 5 minus 3i divided by i plus 1 plus 2i whole square. Right? Uh, obviously, we'll start from here and we'll expand this term. So it becomes 5 minus 3i over i plus, we're expanding this term now. So it's like a plus b whole square. Right? We know a plus b whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab, right? Let's use that here. So 1 plus 4i square plus 4i. Now 4i square is nothing but minus 4 because i square is negative 1. So we get 1 minus 4 plus 4i. 1 minus 4 is minus 3, so minus 3 plus 4i. So this is nothing but minus 3 plus 4i, right? Uh, we can treat it like this. So it becomes like a fraction addition, right? This is one fraction, this is the other fraction, and we got to add both the fractions. How do we add both the fractions? We got to make the same common denominator. Here the denominator is i, here the denominator is 1. So obviously, we got to multiply this with i and this with i, because we got to make the same common denominator. When we do that, we get 5 minus 3i over i plus the denominator is i. And then we do the FOIL on the numerator. So we get minus 3i plus 4i squared, right? Minus 3i plus 4i squared. i squared is negative 1. So this is nothing but negative 3i, negative 4. Because this term is minus 4. So we get minus 4 minus 3i, right? Now we made the same common denominators. So obviously we can just add the numerators because the denominators are already same. So we get i here and let's just add the numerator. 5 minus 3i minus 4 minus 3i. 5 minus 4 is 1. Minus 3i minus 3i is minus 6i. So this is where we are, right? So we started from here, we expanded this guy to get minus 3 plus 4i. That minus 3 plus 4i is nothing but minus 3 plus 4i divided by 1. Kind of looking, making it look like a fraction. We're adding both the fractions here, making the same common denominator, and then we're getting this, right? Now, we got to rationalize this as well, right? We don't want any i in the denominator. How do we get rid of this i in the denominator? Again, we can multiply this fraction by i both up and down, right? As long as we are multiplying any fraction, numerator and denominator by the same entity, we are good, right? So we're multiplying with i on both sides. And why we are doing that? Because now the denominator becomes i squared, which is nothing but negative 1. And on the top, we again FOIL as usual. So we get i minus 6i squared i square itself is negative 1, so minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 6. We get this. So essentially we get minus 6 minus i. Because of, because of the negative 1 here, it changes the sign for both of them, minus 6 minus i. So that's our final answer. Again, just to reiterate, we expanded this term to get here. Then we added the fractions by making the same common denominator, and we got this. Now to rationalize the fraction or to remove the i from the denominator, we are in this case multiplying by i on both sides because then that helps us to get rid of the i because i squared is negative 1. On the top we FOIL and we get this. Now question number 5. So we have a line L who has a slope of uh, minus 3 and an x-intercept of 9 over 2, 9 by 2. And we have to find the y-intercept of this straight line. 
uh, we know the standard form of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus b, right? The slope is given as minus 3 here, right? So the equation of our line L would be y is equal to minus 3x plus b, right? Essentially, what we have to find is the value of b because that part, that's what will give us our y-intercept, which is what they're asking. Okay, how do we find the value of b? The x-intercept is 9 over 2. The x-intercept is 9 over 2. It means that the point where the line cuts the x-axis is 9 over 2, comma 0. So essentially, we have a point 9 over 2, comma 0, which is on this line because that's how the line will have an x-intercept of 9 over 2. So that's what we wanted, right? We already have the slope. We already have this equation here. Let's just plug in this point here and that will help us to get the value of b, uh, which is what they're asking essentially the y-intercept in this case. So let's plug in this value here. So zero is equal to minus three times nine over two plus b. Zero is equal to minus 27 over two plus b, or which gives us b is equal to 27 over two, which is nothing but the y-intercept, which is what they're asking. So pretty straightforward question. The slope is given, so we know the equation of the line. They have given us a point on the line in a different way instead of just directly giving us the point 9 over 2 comma 0. They are just saying that the x-intercept is 9 over 2, which essentially means the same thing, that the point is 9 over 2 comma 0. We plug in this point here and get the value of b. Okay, let's take our last question here. So uh, Mike can do a job in 48 minutes. There's a certain job which Mike is doing and he can do the job in 48 minutes. If his brother helps him, then both of them can together do the job in 32 minutes, right? And the question is asking us, if his brother were to do the job alone, how much time would he have taken, right? How much time his brother would take to do the job alone, right, in this situation, right? So let's try to understand here. Let's try to understand the story of Mike, his brother, and then together. So Mike can do the job in 48 minutes, right? So in 48 minutes, Mike can do one full job, one whole job, right? That's what they're saying. So in one minute, Mike will do one over 48 of the job, correct? In one minute, Mike will do one over 48 of the job. Now, we have to find that how much time his brother will take. Let's say that his brother takes X minutes, which is what we have to find. So if his brother takes X minutes to do the full job, then in one minute, his brother will do one over X of the job, right? With the same logic, what we use for Mike. The situation for the together is given as 32 minutes, right? So when they both are doing the job together, they are doing in 32 minutes. So in 32 minutes, both of them can do one job. So in one minute, they can do one over 38 of the job when they're doing it together, correct? Now let's try to connect the dots here. In one minute, Mike can do one over 48 of the job. In one minute, his brother can do one over x of the job and together if they are doing in one minute they will do one over 30, 32th of the job. It means what? It means that one over 48 plus one over x is equal to one over 32. Because this is the job which they will do in one minute. Mike will do this much, his brother will do this, this much and together if they work together they will do this much and that's what is given to be one over 32 in the question. right? Let's solve this. Uh, we bring it to the side. So 1 over x is equal to 1 over 32 minus 1 over 48, which comes out to be as 1 over 96, which is nothing but x is equal to 96 minutes. So it means that if his brother were to do the job alone, his brother would take 96 minutes. Again, just to reiterate, the way we do these questions is that we go for a per unit time. So in case of Mike, we are saying that in one minute he will do this much of the job. His brother will do in one minute this much of the job if they are doing together. So in one minute they will do this plus this, which is given to be as 1 over 32. 
and then we solve for x and what was our x our x was nothing but the time which his brother will take to do the job alone and the value of x is 96 so his brother will take 96 minutes hey guys hope you like the video and you found the examples and discussions meaningful and useful uh, keep practicing and we'll meet again take care